Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples on a, well, I'm not going to get into the weather again, but let's just say I'm still not thrilled. The uh, temperature in the old trusty Silverado uh, was showing 80 degrees on the way in this morning, which is pretty friggin' unacceptable for a, uh, for a uh, sunless morning. So it's only going to get hotter as the day goes on, but we're going to pretend that's not the case and we're going to go forward. Uh, today I have this 2016 Mercedes-Benz GL450. Uh, this is a luxury SUV. It's a big sucker. I mean, the last time the Germans made anything this big, it, uh, it was the Hindenburg, and we all know how that ended. You know, hopefully this review comes to a different conclusion. Uh, the styling, nice. This is the second generation. Uh, the first generation, which came out here in the United States in 07, was wildly successful. It was the best-selling full-size luxury SUV out there, more than the Escalade or the Suburban or any of that stuff. I mean, it sold like hotcakes. And uh, this one isn't doing that bad either. In fact, it prompted BMW to come out with their own full-size SUV recently uh, to sort of take it to Mercedes. Uh, it's uh, called the uh, GL because uh, the G stands for Galanda Wagon, uh, which is, uh, you know, the German way of saying off-road vehicle, which is kind of hilarious because, again, I mean, if you see this thing outside of a Whole Foods parking lot, it's going to be considered off-road to the owner. And it was meant to replace the original G-Wagon. If you remember that solid axle, you know, came out in 79. They didn't get here till a few years later. Uh, you know, that they, they were going to get rid of that thing, the, the G-Wagon, and replace it with the GL. And then I imagine all the, you know, Kim Kardashians and Kenny Wests of the world kind of connected with the Eastern European gangsters and formed a lobbying group that went to Mercedes and said, absolutely not. You know, we need these things to show up to late night nightclub shootings. And uh, so they did keep making that original G-Wagon, which is still being sold alongside the GL today. Uh, the GL, which is now, by the way, the GLS. Uh, you know, Mercedes changes its nomenclature more than Lady Gaga changes outfits. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, you, you never know which car is which. It becomes the, you know, the ML becomes the GL, becomes the GLE, yeah, that sort of thing. That's not exactly right, but you know what I mean. They're just always swapping them around. Uh, but anyway, when this one came out in 16, it was the GL. And uh, it's a fine piece. Again, second generation. The styling is, you know, it's pretty neutral. A very, very much uh, corporate Mercedes-Benz. You've got nice angles. You've got a nice body line. You've got that swooping uh, bulge in the uh, rear fender. Uh, you've got good looking 20 inch wheels on this thing. You've got the sort of pickle fork rear view mirrors that I like on these cars. Uh, up front, the star and the grill. Long gone are the days of the hood star, I guess. Nice big chrome skid plate at the I mean, what the point? What, what is the point of a chrome skid plate? I mean, if you're going to hit a rock with it, it's not going to look very nice after the first, uh, you know, few bumps, which again gets to the point that this thing really isn't going to be used off road uh, by most of its Buyers, even if it is a pretty capable off-road machine. Uh, this one does have a panoramic sunroof, very, very nice stuff. And, uh, you know, even though they sort of base out in the sixty dollars to $70,000 range, you start adding any options, and these things get up in the eighty dollars and $90,000 range very, very quickly. And uh, as such, it's a very profitable uh, vehicle for Mercedes-Benz. See the attractive-looking LED headlamps. The running boards, eh, you know, I think that's more of a form over function thing because they're kind of useless. I mean, if you get your, I mean, what, I mean, I don't have very big feet. I hate to admit, but look at that. So, <laughs> I mean, how am I going to use this thing? You get into size 11, 12s, so you're going to have to use your tiptoes to try and, uh, try and get up on it. Uh, we'll just start inside. I mean, the big twice pipes there, uh, which is kind of funny because this thing is not uh, V8 powered the way it used to be. Uh, when 15 rolled around, they changed that for, uh, you know, Obama's gas mileage stuff. But anyway, pinch the, uh, whatchamacallit, the hatch there and up it comes. Uh, you see, uh, we've got this uh, cargo cover kind of lazily installed there, but we'll get into that. There is the third row seat, and even unlike the Suburbans and Tahoes of the world, uh, this third row seat is pretty damn good. Let me go around to the front. Have a look at this. 
Uh, you know, your Canadians aren't going to be miserable back there. I mean, they may just be miserable anyway for a variety of reasons, but not because of the back seats in the GL, because they're going to have a ton of headroom, uh, yeah, even some legroom. I mean, so you can really fit a six-footer back there, and he's not going to be uh, not going to be crying at you too much. Uh, they do use a power assist sort of thing. So if I press that, the little electric motor whirs it down. Same on the other side. I like the way the little flap cover makes it all nice and level. And then you end up with a pretty big cargo area. Uh, if I want to install this thing, which I'm not going to get it out of here. You see those two little rectangular indentations. You can put that in there, uh, use the cargo cover to slide back and cover up any toddlers you might have stuffed in the back. <clears throat> Let's see what's uh, under this thing. Well, I guess that's what we'd expect is a spare tire. So uh, all your jacking hardware, whatnot, you know, very, very nice stuff. And again, a good sp uh, stuff, you know, spot some narcotics in there or something. Try to keep them a secret. Uh, forget about an infant containment net. You know, you're not getting one in there. You'd have to be like brand new. But uh, otherwise, I don't know what you're going to fit in here. This little net thing. I mean, honestly, I mean, it's ridiculous. Maybe a phone, pack of cigarettes very small thing to have a uh, net containment. Uh, over here you do have a first aid kit. Uh, as we say, everything a wounded German might need in the field. And this switch here is not a switch. It's a hook. Okay, so it's a hook to hang. I, I mean, again, I don't know, roadkill. I don't know what you're going to hang from this hook that's not going to bottom out. But uh, I'm sure the German engineers could tell you. You also have some cup holders sort of engineered into the side which with uh, armrests. And <clears throat> you got airbags back here. I think this thing has 11 of them in total. So uh, everyone's going to be nice and safe and sound in here. Uh, anyway, to close that back down, just press this guy. And down it comes. All right, so let's see about egress into the back. I know I did this the other day uh, one-handed, or sorry, two-handed. I think it's going to suck one-handed, but uh, obviously you got your Canadians. They're sitting there impatiently waiting to get in the uh, the third row seat of the car. Uh, you got to lift this guy up. And you can see now we've got a fold down, and then this little red handle thing pops up. So we pull that. Actually, not bad. One-handed, it can be done. We'll see if it goes back down as easily. But uh, now you have access to your... Uh, rear seat. Uh, I'm not going to lift this one because obviously it's going to screw up the, uh, whatchamacallit, that cargo cover. But if I lift this one, why am I not being able to lift this out? Because I'm pressing the wrong way in the button. Actually, a one touch thing, so that's great. If that uh, cargo cover were a little more wedged in there, that would have broken. Anyway, back down it goes. So they do give you a nice way to get in and out of the back here uh, without too much hassle. And then we're going to, oh my god, I'm weak. Push down on this. Pull this up. There, this is where, oh, that's where we get into trouble. And then one more. There it is. So nice and back. And now you've got room for three in the back uh, with pretty good leg room. And uh, everyone's going to be fairly chipper back there. Uh, the material, I love these headrests. They're <laughs> scary looking. But anyway, uh, MB Tex material, indistinguishable from leather. Nobody will have a clue. And uh, it's absolutely indestructible. Uh, Mercedes has always done that with their MB Tex. I mean, if you ever have a nuclear holocaust, uh, the only thing left on the planet are going to be cockroaches and Mercedes MB Tex. So nice contrasting stitching. All very lovely, and uh, three passengers are going to be pretty happy back there. Uh, very nice treatment on the door panel. I mean, you have to remember that this thing is, uh, what I can't remember what journal, I don't really care anyway. He called it the American S-Class, uh, because, of course, uh, you know, SUVs are uh, a little bit more popular here than big luxury sedans. This thing does outsell the S-Class. Uh, so it's going to be very well appointed. You see a beautiful uh, dark wood. I believe that's the bird's eye maple. You've got the nice contrasting stitching everywhere. But, you know, very somber, very Teutonic. Uh, you know, it, it, this door panel has no sense of humor whatsoever. It's just a door panel, and it's well made, and it's nice, and uh, it asks for nothing and gives you nothing more. Uh, you do have a little pocket there, so... Uh, I guess you need that uh, if you got the gangsters in the back somewhere to stuff their nine mils. Also a little net here to put things and uh, all in all everyone's going to be pretty chipper in the back seat. I'll have a look under the hood before we get inside. <clears throat> 
All right, so under the hood is where the big change occurred by this year. Uh, gone is that twin turbo 4.7 liter V8 that you would have also found in the S-Class, at least in this standard model. And in its place is a three liter twin turbocharged V6, which presumably they've boosted the hell out of because it has the exact same horsepower rate in about 370 as that 4.7 V8 did. Uh, so man, are they making this thing work pretty hard. Uh, torque is down from the V8, which is obvious. Uh, I'm not sure what I know. I remember the old one. It had a 7,500 pound tow capacity. <clears throat> you would think this would have to be a little bit less, but uh, even so, it's still going to be able to tow, you know, a pretty good sized boat without too much misery. And uh, kudos to Mercedes for that engineering. Uh, this also does bump up the fuel mileage considerably, probably, you know, two, three, four over what the V8 offered. You're probably going to get up near 21 on the highway in this thing, uh, which is pretty impressive for a behemoth like this thing. Uh, anyway, all very modern, all very technological, all very nice. You've got your steering by wire under here. You've got all of your uh, different, um, yeah, you know, you have to talk to a German. He'll tell you why all of this is good. Uh, but you know what it is. It's all sort of advanced, overcomplicated German engineering uh, that hopefully will stay reliable and uh, get you down the road okay. But uh, anyway, everything pretty under there. No issues at all. Uh, that is mated to that very tried and true seven speed automatic and uh, goes through Mercedes formatic all wheel drive system uh, that has proven to be very reliable and uh, good in the long term. So hopefully the engine will match the uh, tranny, I can't say tranny anymore. I mean, the engine will match the transmission and the all wheel drive system in terms of its uh, longevity. Beautiful, beautiful uh, LED lighting, all the ropey LEDs and projection stuff. Very, very nice. You got some more LEDs there in the, uh, the, the little spot beneath them. And again, that big chrome skid plate that just cracks me up. But all in all, a good looking piece. 20-inch uh, wheels, giant brakes behind them. Very, very nice. Uh, this does have the premium package, so uh, it does have the keyless entry. You can press that little button, folds in the mirrors to open it. Just put your hand on it, give it a tug. And now we've got the front seats. And again, we've got something that's very, again, extremely well constructed, very attractive to look at, but very, very Teutonic and simple uh, in its design. It's not going to wow you and overwhelm you with all sorts of light shows and gadgetry the way an Escalade might. Uh, this is a somber, you know, purpose-built interior uh, designed to wear well and uh, be appealing to the driver without trying to give him a laugh or anything. Uh, same treatment on the door panels. You got all your power window stuff. You got your uh, trunk release here. Uh, I like this. This will fold out those uh, rear windows like it would in an old, uh, you know, Vista Cruiser wagon. You remember you could sit in the back of those things and poke out the vent windows. Well, they don't give you those controls back there because they don't trust whoever's going to be sitting Sitting back there. Only the driver can operate that and uh, then vent out those back windows. Uh, up top, you see that big panoramic roof. The screen is deployed now to keep the sun out. And, um, you know, all in all, it's just fine. Uh, the seats are very, very comfortable, very supportive, very Teutonic, very lovely, and uh, very nice on long trips. So hop in, use our Keyless Go feature to fire it up. Of course, it beeps at me because there's the blind spot coming on in the mirror. <clears throat> I guess you always have to put your seatbelt on before you start it, or you got that U-boat is sinking alarm that I hate in the Mercedes. Of course, it's in every car now. Okay, your automatic headlights over here. Uh, you know, if you go all the way here, it's the city lights. Here's the parking lights, and uh, there's the auto lights. As a very nice gentleman pointed out the other day, there is a difference between auto and full on, you know, even if you leave it in full on, it does shut it off when you get rid of it. Uh, or sorry, <laughs> it does shut it off when you turn it off. And that way you're not gonna drain the battery. Uh, you got a nice multifunction wheel with stuff for the driver information center here. You can go through that and between the gauges, uh, ready for Bluetooth, all that stuff. What is this? Assistance graphic distance warning, blind spot attention assist. Uh, you know, the thing has more safety features than, uh, you know, Ralph Nader's dream car. I mean, it, it has collision avoidance, it has lane assist, 
assist, it has a blind spot assist, it has a parking feature that will actually park the car for you, you just have to use the gas and the brake, and uh, you know, a lot of hyper-technical German stuff that's uh, designed to make sure that you're going to be okay in the event of calamity. So God bless it. Uh, also has a power tilt and telescope, nice. Uh, you got these uh, flippity flip paddles if you want to bang your way through the gears. Uh, you got a nice, um, I don't know if it's leather MB tech still, but whatever. Beautifully stitched dashboard. Uh, nobody's going to know it's not leather if it isn't. Uh, again, back with the instrument cluster, your 160 mile an hour speedo. I think this thing's limited to 130, which ain't bad. And it accelerates like a mofo. Uh, zero to 60, like 62, quarter mile under 15. I mean, out of a twin turbo V6 and a giant SUV, uh, it's just amazing to me how far engines have come. Uh, it really, really is. I mean, those were performance figures you'd get out of a Z28 back in 92 and uh, today the family truckster can you know knock it off the quarter mile track uh, you got uh, you know your wiper controls over here with intermittent you got your cruise control down there uh, you've got uh, again Mercedes sort of weird updated version of the column shifter on your dad's 68 Buick and uh, you know it's all fine you also have uh, a very tiny little analog gas gauge there and uh, temp gauge within the tack and the speedo uh, also, of course, your temperature, which maybe my truck was lying to me. This one says 76, but I don't believe it. I don't feel it. feels like 80 to me. Go back through this, see what we got. Lane keeping assist. You know, to serve. Instrument cluster via. You can change all the settings. Uh, I mean, the way this thing lights up inside and out is incredible. A little LED and, you know, mood lighting everywhere that you can change around. I think it would be kind of cool if they had green on one side and red on the other, like the Queen Mary, uh, which this thing is a little bit like. Uh, having the Parktronic, you see that little pod up there? Uh, that's going to light up uh, yellow and red LEDs as you get too close to something in the front or too close to something in the back. And that's also matched by uh, a little pod at the very back that you can see in your rear view, which does the same for the, for the rear. Uh, having the premium unit, uh, this thing does have command with Harman Kardon navigation. Uh, you've got your little joystick control here. What do we have? The Black Crows? Oh, God, I don't know. They had their day. It's gone. Uh, you got your navigation, which is nice. You can change all that. It can become three-dimensional. <clears throat> it can become, um, you know, bigger, smaller, whatever. Uh, it works out pretty nice. Uh, if I go to my direct access to get back there. Let's see. Classic vinyl, classic rewind. Under audio, of course, you have all your different features, your satellite radio, your USB, your Bluetooth audio, your memory card, all the stuff that you're probably never going to use. Uh, of course, you've got a Bluetooth phone system, guess it better. Uh, you got your video for, you know, your snuff films or whatever it is you watch when you're driving around. Obviously, you have to be parked unless you find some, you know, 16-year-old Polish kid to come in and wire it so you can run it down the road. And then, of course, your system where you get your uh, analog clock. <laughs> they couldn't help themselves. You know, in that E-Class we did the other day, we had two analog clocks. Well, there's no analog clock in this thing. They did do what I asked them to do, and now we've got just a nice digital clock out of a Celica. But uh, they just can't help themselves. When you go into system, there's your analog clock. What else do we have? full screen. You get into uh, your mile per gallon chart or the clock. That's it? I don't believe it. Uh, we go into time settings. Okay, text reader speed, voice control, camera, activate, oh, you know, what? all that stuff. Yeah, enjoy it at your own pace. Uh, in dash CD, nice stuff. There's your little uh, dash card uh, and whatever, the in data card for me. I don't know if anyone uses those. Uh, probably some weird cats still, but not very many. Uh, you got your heated seats. You can turn off your traction control. You've got your uh, whatever the hell that is, your four-way flashers. Uh, Eco, which again, I'm turning off because that makes me nervous that it's going to shut off at a traffic light. And uh, that's just a feature that I hate in cars. Uh, you know, I've driven so many pieces of crap and turds over the years, uh, you know, coming up through the car business. Not that I've made it that far, but uh, they were really bad in the beginning. And, you know, I stopped at a red light, the thing shuts off. I'm friggin' terrified. I mean, if you have a 
you know, 1988 Lincoln shut off at a traffic light. It's not because it's trying to save gas. It's because you're screwed. But uh, anyway, so when these things do the same, it, it tortures me. So every time I see an eco switch, off it goes. Uh, this thing will turn off your parking indicators. If you're in a drive through and they're beeping at you, annoying you, hit that and it'll stop doing it. Of course, the passenger heated seat. Uh, one thing that's neat, not everyone, in the old Mercedes Benz, like in the 80s with those Beckers, uh, they had a thing where you could press the asterisk button and direct access a channel and Mercedes has still kept that so I can still go 008 get myself to the 80s channel and we got some Def Leppard going drumming's uh, at a certain point it became a little bit simplistic uh, over here in the uh, glove box very traditional you got a set of books nice uh, this rolling wooden thing harkens to earlier benzes uh, they do give you what appears to be an ashtray of some sort uh, you also get heated or cooled cup holders and like the way they become redder i mean mercedes benz didn't used to be that gimmicky where they would actually mood light the cup holders uh, in coordination with um, you know with whatever you wanted your beverage to be hot or cold but and they're doing it now. Uh, you got, of course, your dual side climate control there. All very nice stuff. Uh, your joystick for the command unit. The star is a programmable button, so you can make that be whatever you want it to be. Uh, you press uh, the airmatic system. You get vehicle rising. That's going to give us a little bit more ground clearance. You know, I mean, again, if you're the Eastern European gangster, the ground clearance to get over the body of your rival is already tall enough. Uh, you're not going to have to lift it. But I guess if you're trying to get through muddy ruts or, you know, in the back of a, a building somewhere with big high you know, rubble, construction rubble to meet for a drug deal. Uh, that's going to be a good thing to have. So you'll be able to press that and up you go. Of course, if you're doing that, you're probably in a traditional G-Wagon and not this one. Uh, anyway, then you can put it back down again, get it to uh, the normal ride height, and uh, there you go. Uh, this is a hill descent feature. You press that and the engine brake will work as you're going down a hill so you don't go into some runaway mode. Uh, press this, you get a nice little weird place to put stuff. There's an iPhone or iPod connector, little cup for your bags of cocaine or whatever it is you carry around with you. Close that down, you're good to go. Uh, up here you've got a self-dimming mirror with home link garage door openers. You've got your Embrace 2, the more advanced version of Germany's OnStar. Now the woman isn't just cranky, but she's got Bluetooth. Uh, over here you've got your map lights, you've got your rear lights, you've got this big pan of roof that gets rid of the slide. Goes into that little thing in the center. One more and back goes the big sunroof. So now you can let in the night sky or you can have your passenger stand up with his MP5 and start shooting at the rival tanks. I got a ram now. This isn't a G-Wagon. This isn't, a, this thing's probably gonna go around Martha's Vineyard, not, uh, not East LA. Let's go for a spin. Now, I have to say this about this particular car is Mercedes-Benz knows its target market. I mean, they build these things, and you get the defrost on. They build these things in Alabama. So they're, in many ways, a domestic car. You know, I mean, if it makes it to Germany, it's basically an import. And it is way more designed for the American market uh, than the European market. I mean, this is a car for big, giant, chubby Americans to, you know, tool around the country club and, uh, you know, do whatever it is they want to do. Uh, they, they, that's what this thing, you know, again, Tahoe Suburban. Oh, God, that is a terribly clean, unclean windshield coupled with mist. Doesn't really get any worse than that, but hopefully the defrost works fast. But anyway, point being, so you've got this steering by wire, which, uh, you know, the assist is extremely low when you're, or sorry, extremely high when you're just going at low speeds. Uh, they want you to feel, uh, you know, like there's almost no effort at all. And it does with the turning radius it has and the low, uh, uh, the low effort to move it around, uh, it's very easy to park and navigate this thing in tight quarters. So that's a nice feature. And uh, of course it does stiffen up as you get going and uh, becomes a little more feely on the interstate. All right, there we go. Let me hammer it a little bit. Holy God. Hey, listen to that for a V6, that's awesome. 
I mean, you really got to hand it to him. Although I don't know how hard that poor little bastard has to work to uh, to move this big lug down the road like that. But good God, they're definitely, yeah, they made it work. So you get pretty good gas mileage unless you accelerate like that. And, uh, you know, you're not really losing anything in the oomph department. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, now at this stage, here it is. I'm just, I'm sitting in a very nice high, you know, command the world sort of, uh, position around me. Uh, I've got this lovely isolation from, you know, like we talked about with the old town cars. You just don't feel the road around you. You don't hear the sounds. The bumps are smoothed out. You know, it's got that. For a unibody car, not body on frame, uh, it has got that. A four-wheel independent suspension, so, you know, very uh, sure of itself going around corners or over bumps or inclines. And it's just a lovely car to take on a trip. I mean, a family of seven, even if they're all six footers, can fit in this thing comfortably. Uh, they're not gonna feel like they're, you know, being infringed upon by any of the, the misery that's outside or around them. They can, you know, become a tourist and just look out the window at, uh, you know, the commoners and uh, laugh out loud and light their cigars with hundred dollar bills and be chipper. And uh, otherwise, they, they, there it is, it is a big, Luxo cruiser in the true American fashion and uh, that's why they you know compete so well with the Escalades and the high-end Suburbans and stuff you get that Mercedes nomenclature uh, While at the same time getting all the big luxury SUV feel you do from the American behemoths Anyway, I won't go on and on. Thankfully, this didn't end like the Hindenburg, at least not yet. I still have to get back uh, to the shop, but uh, it's nice. The car drives nice. The truck drives nice. Call it what you will. These are blind spots going there. Uh, you know, the vibration in the wheel if I get out of the lane, the little coffee cup telling me I'm tired. It's got tons of safety features, the 11 airbags. Uh, it's just a big, safe, luxurious cruiser. And if that's what you're looking for, you'd be real happy with this. You won't even know it as a V6. Just pretend you don't know. You'll be fine. Uh, this one is off our lot, so it's for sale. If you have an interest, you can go to aenaples.com. Uh, otherwise, I uh, really appreciate you having a look today, and we will see you with the next one. Take care.